Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, coming back to you with some more bid axe content, this time trying to modify two bid axes to try to improve its thermal headroom and efficiency using cooler mods. Uh, the main cooler is going to be the 52 Pi cooler, very popular cooler for these type of guys. You are going to need a 3D printed, uh, you know, CPU mount, or excuse me, cooler mount bracket that you can print yourself or buy it outright i would urge everybody to try to print and build these bid axes themselves but i don't have a 3d printer or the tools to do so but we got to modify this one and we're going to be trying to modify this one right now you can see the core temperature is at 68 degrees celsius uh, the voltage regulator is a little bit high as well while it's performing very well around 1.33 terahash i want to see what we can do to improve that as well but that guy is going to be getting the black style 52 Pi cooler. I don't even know if it will fit or work. It should. Uh, we have the mounting bracket, but we'll just have to see how that goes. And then in here, we have some copper coolers or heat sinks to put on miscellaneous components to try to add some uh, better thermals for all the components on there. We're going to be using my Duralnot thermal paste. I could use Cryonaut Extreme, but Duralnot has that longevity and it's only going to be about one to 0.5 degrees difference in temperature, but Duro not on the chip itself uh, to mount the heat sink with and see if we can improve thermals. Here's what the little cooler looks like. We're not gonna be using this fan. Uh, we could change that pin out, but we're not gonna be using this fan. We're just gonna be using a different type of fan to mount to it. And you can see how that would sit on that chip once we apply using the 3d printed bracket i'll show you everything in the finished product the hardware here is for raspberry pi i believe either three or four or excuse me five um and the other one's for three or four so it may not work but i'm going to find out the hard way we're just going to try to see if we can install these onto the bid axis i already have some before temperatures and thermals uh, and performance now let's slap this thing together need to mount this bracket first mount the cooler, or excuse me, mount the bracket to the cooler. You can see the two holes down here. And then apply thermal paste and try to mount the cooler to the bed axe. We do have to take a couple screws that came with the 52 Pi cooler to mount the 3D printed bracket. But make sure you pay attention. Look at that gap. The gap difference between the bottom of the mounting plate and then the cold plate of the cooler and this 3D printed bracket, you wanna make sure it's not flipped the other way. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a sufficient mounting pressure onto the die. So make sure you have it the right way. And that is like so. So now we just need to screw these two screws in there to make sure everything is sufficiently mounted. Just like so, the screw should be below or flush at the very bottom. And now we're gonna use these screws, uh, which appear to be Allen, and these nuts to hold the mounting bracket on to the chip. Now, because the screws that came with the original fan on the 52 Pi cooler was short, it won't go through the full length of this fan that came with the original bit X. And this screw is an inch and a quarter, and it's too long, it would cut into the fins. So instead, zip tie life, I'm never shy to use zip ties, so we got it on there. It's still a little protector on there to protect the little one's fingers from touching the fan. Got some thermal paste on there, some dural knot, and now it's just a matter of these screws, or uh, yeah, screws, bolts, I guess you could say, going in there um, and tightening up. Now the hard part is, is I didn't leave my, myself enough space. I got more zip ties, so if I need to cut those off, I can, but I need enough space there hold the top side of the nut which is an allen key uh, or the bolt and then tighten the nut at the bottom so maybe don't put the fan on right away but it was a, a challenge just trying to get it in there because there's not much uh, area behind those mounting holes for the screws that I need to get the zip ties through all right there it is don't over to torque these nuts and bolts but you can see the 3d prints a little bit bowed so I try to straighten that out as much as possible. Don't put too much pressure. You don't really need to crank on it. Literally, I'm holding the back, the nut on the back with my finger while I'm cranking on the bolt. Uh, the fan is very tight. I'm never getting it unplugged from the four pin PWM. Otherwise, I'm just taking the whole thing apart anyway. So that's all good. And now heat sinks. We need to place these in certain areas like right here. Uh, I see there's a lot of heat coming from this one area with my thermal camera or thermal probe. 
uh, and also some areas in the back. Let me show you all those individual areas. The heat sinks that I got off our Amazon, you can get them. They're very cheap. I'll link them down in the description, but you know, you just got your medium sized squares, your large rectangles, and then your small boys, and then your even smaller boys. So I'll link them down in the description. Let me show you where to place them on this bit X gamma. So I'm just gonna focus on some of the important areas. For example, behind the chip, you could actually see where these little holes are. That is directly behind the ASIC chip. If we flip it over, you could see, boom, there it is. So I'm gonna put one heat sink there. I know some people put them on the inductors, but I'm not going to. If this thing is sitting inside this frame, it, unless I cut the frame, uh, which I can do, uh, it would interfere. So I'm not gonna worry about the inductor. Plus they can handle some high temperatures, but we are definitely gonna put one on this chip right here, uh, which is the voltage regulator. And then some people actually put a heat sink right on the ESP32 slash Wi-Fi chip or the Bidax logo. I'm not gonna go that crazy, but definitely one there right next to or right on the opposite side of the voltage regulator uh one behind the e the the actual asic chip one on top of the voltage regulator and i'll consider putting one right here next to c20 and c17 but let me go ahead and place everything right now just like so uh, i'm not going to put one right here for right now but i could always put one later because I want to save the other heat sinks uh, for the other Bidax Gamma that we're going to do the exact same steps to uh, and compare the thermal improvement before and after. But you can see behind the ASIC chip on the voltage regulator, opposite side of the voltage regulator, and then the big 52 pi, which should help out. And honestly, if you didn't have heat sinks to, to go on the back, if you could get a fan on the back side or some type of ambient airflow, even if it's hot, would definitely improve the performance of your bid X. And I know we're just fighting for uh, small gains, but tinkering around with these little bid axes is what I really love. Hence the reason why I made so many videos recently. But micro slash nano miners are one of my favorites. Let's go ahead and repeat the same process to the other bid X gamma, and I'll bring you back for the final results to test performance and efficiency gains. All right, number two is done. And as you can see, we've got the heat sink right there on the backside of the voltage regulator one directly on it, uh, and then one at the bottom behind the actual ASIC chip. But of course, I couldn't put one on the inductor because it would hit the frame. Uh, so now let's get these things. Uh, we already got one up and running. It's actually doing really good. Let's get the second one up and running and see how it's performing uh, by logging into it and checking out the thermal improvement. So after all the cooling mods, we did increase our voltage regulator temperature on one of the models, but first the Gamma X1 uh, voltage regulator sitting at 67 degrees Celsius, uh, ASIC chip temperature sitting around 68 degrees Celsius, still sitting around 625 megahertz, 1.07 uh, volts, and 84% fan speed, but before we were at 67.8 anyways. So the ASIC chip temperature didn't do much, but the voltage regulator did drop. So the cooler that was already on there and the thermal paste application that I got from Pleb Source was actually super good we did drop voltage down from 1.09 to 1.07 so that is a little bit of improvement but still sitting around the same rpm hash rate and thermally basically the same except for the voltage regulator but it will climb up uh during the peak heat to that same 71 70 degrees celsius so maybe we could do some better cooling mods or a copper cooler on it moving on to the next one right now we're at 55 degrees celsius this is by far my best one Right, this is the one we dunked in immersion liquid. Not sure if the sensor is acting wonky, but this thing is reading 55.8 degrees Celsius. Now, the difference between this one and this one is the copper pipe on the 52 pi cooler versus the black one, the one that's been painted black. And I wonder if that that coloring of that heat sink is actually impacting the miner. And I should have just got the copper one. I just wanted to try something different. But the, the ASIC chip temperature is so much better. 55 degrees uh, Celsius. The voltage regulator down to 63. Uh, fan speed is not having to go ramp up as high. It is a different fan, but it's not having to ramp up as high. Still sitting at 650 megahertz on the core. You can see the voltage is a little bit higher at 1.12. We could probably do some optimization. And comparing that to before on air, 69.5 down to 55 56 degrees celsius that's a mark improvement but the voltage regular did obviously raise up 
uh, because now we don't have a downdraft cooler blowing on that area as well. Uh, but you can see that at least on this miner, we couldn't get above 490 megahertz. It just would not clock above it. The only way to do that is when we went to immersion cooling. And even with immersion cooling, sitting next to two hot S19K Pros, the ASIC chip temperature was 65.6, but the voltage regulator was at 48. But we could push up above 490 megahertz. So I say it's a mark improvement overall. Uh, it's just one miner, my dud miner, the, the one that was not performing very well, wouldn't go above 490, is done the best with the cooling mods. And then my, uh, usually my strongest hitter is actually doing about the same, if not a little bit worse by just a hair. And again, I think that might be down to the difference being getting the little black um, powder coated or painted 52 pi versus the copper one. But you let me know in the comment section what you think. That's the differences between before and after. So again, the one on the right here was my best bid axe. It performed the best on the regular cooler that it came with, whereas this one, the white one, did not. We def definitely improved overall the white bid axe, right? From the voltage regulator to the CPU temperatures or the uh, chip temperatures, we definitely improved overall on this one while usually my best bit axe is actually performing roughly the same and or a little bit worse in some areas. So we dropped the voltage regulator temperature on air, but the chip temperatures unfortunately did worse. Is that because of the black coating that is on this 52 pi cooler? I don't know. You let me know what your thoughts are. Maybe uh, we'll grab another one of the aluminum and copper heat pipes. I think that direct that bent copper pipe that's at the bottom that touches the die directly definitely would have improved it but we'll have to see just let me know what your thoughts are either way that is what we get uh if we add some copper heat sinks to certain areas we could have added a couple more like to the inductors and maybe a bigger one like a longer rectangle on the voltage regulator uh, but let me know what your thoughts are and what cooling mods you like and what you love about the bid x down in the comment section below but do me a favor on the way out Hit that like button, get subscribed, hit notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel on what we do here, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.